Right, so let's begin tonight with key developments around the crucial case involving Kenya's fourth president, Uhuru Kenyatta. Here now is a look at the string of events that point to a dramatic phase of this case. In the last few hours, the president has filed an application seeking to stop that trial altogether on the grounds of what he calls abuse of process by the prosecution here in Nairobi. Politicians from both sides of the political divide have clashed over the role of former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan in the country. From The Hague, Deputy President William Ruto is making a trip back home to pave way for the President to attend the AU summit that is set to begin in Addis Ababa tomorrow. We begin with Uhuru's latest application at The Hague and KTN's Edith Kimani will be bringing us that story in just a moment. So let's move on to our other stories tonight. And, of course, we will start off with uh, the ICC issues at Guterres' burial. Wilson? Yes, and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's ICC dilemma has continued to generate an interesting conversation, uh, both nationally and internationally, even with the threat of looming consequences of President Uhuru's failure to travel to The Hague, the Kenyatta administration has been keen to impose its own unique foreign policy. It has emerged that the President may not go to The Hague. Ben Kitili takes a look at the possibilities and the potential implications. In exactly a month's time, President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to be making his way to The Hague to attend his trial at the International Criminal Court. However, there has been much national debate on whether or not the President should attend in person with a request before The Hague-based court for him to participate via a video link. So should or will President Kenyatta go to The Hague? With 50% of the Kenyan cases currently before the ICC and his deputy in the dock, many will expect President Uhuru Kenyatta to tow the ICC line and travel to The Hague come November 11th. The throne of victory. However, despite continuously vowing to cooperate with The Hague-based court and even referring to the ICC case as a personal challenge, the rhetoric has been constantly changing in recent months. The Kenyatta administration has defiantly ignored the famous warning that choices have consequences. Barely seven months into office, President Kenyatta is keen to stamp his authority through a tough foreign policy. And the ICC trials could be caught in the crossfire. And I could challenge you to tell me in what place on earth a serving president has been brought before any uh, court of justice. Could this be a message directed at the ICC? Kenyatta's foreign secretary, Amina Mohammed, appeared non-committal on whether or not the president would be traveling to The Hague. And according to political analyst Mutahe Ngonyi, the, the best and only option in this particular instance is not to show up. And, 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 and I think he should not do it. Because if he does that, and the withdrawal, mass withdrawal, if it will happen of the African states from uh, uh, this particular uh, court, then it will have absolutely no moral grounding to pursue him. Up until now, President Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto have fully cooperated with the ICC. A President Kenyatta no-show would totally change the dynamics of the Kenyan cases. What are they going to do about it if he doesn't show up? Maybe they will issue a warrant of arrest like Al-Bashir and all that. But currently, ICC has lost its moral grounding. Chief mediator in the aftermath of the 2007-2008 post poll violence, Kofi Annan, has found himself in the thick of things yet again after warning Kenya against withdrawing from the ICC. And it's partly because of what he did, facilitating the signature of uh, that peace deal. And his role ended there. He should have gone to Kumasi or wherever he lives and forgotten about, uh, about us as, as Kenyans. The minority coalition court, however, has come to Anand's defense, urging Kenyans to heed his counsel. But that withdrawal will not curtail the ICC from pursuing people whom it suspects to have committed heinous crimes 
And therefore, in my view, it is an exercise in futility. And expectedly, Jubilee leaders have differed with their counterparts. On whether his excellency the president will go to the Hague or not, you will ask me that question on the 11th of November when we reach there. African heads of state have continuously threatened to pull out of the Rome Statute on mass, accusing the ICC of unfairly targeting African countries. The continent will know how serious its leaders are come Saturday during the AU summit meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Ben Kitili, KTN.